you paul jason how are you today where are you today today we are in innsbruck in Tyrol. Wow. so why are you in innsbruck that's a good question we're in innsbruck because this is kind of the the capital of uh, anabaptist history i think in this region it's definitely it's a highlight for sure i mean this is a place you have to come and see if you're interested in how to write history at all so we are why? here why We're, why yeah. do you have to be there as a hut right because this is the place where jacob hutter was martyred so i mean you have to come and see the square the plaque on the wall where this actual event took place uh, a yeah. hutterite a hutterite visit to europe would not be complete without coming to see this site as well there's the hutter park which the Hutter Arbeitskreis, the Hutterite Working Committee, has uh, created in honor or to commemorate the Hutterite martyrs here. And I believe, as far as our Tyrolean ancestry goes, you know, this is kind of the gateway into Tyrol in some sense. You ask, why are we here, Astrid? Yep. We are here because, uh, yeah, we're, we've had this vision for an, a Hutterite pilgrimage and we began walking two weeks ago in Zurich and have now come to Innsbruck, 300 kilometers later. And this, this is part of the, this is one of the main spots on the map we had to hit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why we're here today. Yeah. So what was your impression when you stood in front of the golden roof in Innsbruck. Mm. What was your feeling at that moment? Well, you know, it, it felt like everything I'd been reading about was what, is it, what was here, you know, I was actually seeing it in real life. And, um, you know, I kind of came in a, at a cool time because there was two street performers playing very old folk music with uh, these ancient instruments. And they told me this was from the 1500s, this music. And I'm like, okay, this is, you know, this is maybe Jakob Hutter was listening to this music as well. And it almost felt like I was transported back there in some sense. And uh, I could see that, you know, there was, it's quite a multicultural place. Here. You know, there's a lot of people from different religions and it almost felt like I was transported back there. It's felt kind of surreal to some extent. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I were to answer this question, I've been here before and I would say it hit me a lot more four years ago. Like I remember being in the square and trying to envision the, the you know, the pile of wood and a person on it. What is it called? What is the term for um, burning at the stake? Yeah, burning at burning the stake. At the stake. Okay. What's that called in German though? Uh, Scheiterhaufen. Scheiterhaufen. Okay, Scheiterhaufen That's, verbrannt. Yeah. I was trying to picture this and I was asking myself, how do I honor this person? And, and uh, so I remember being here four years ago, going down the street and finding a flower shop, going inside and getting a rose that I was like, okay, nobody's going to notice this, but I'm going to lay this on the ground by the plaque just to say, okay, I was here. Um, and how much you know this this is this is who i this is a, such a definition of who i am comes from this person right so when i was there yesterday it really didn't feel i didn't feel much of anything 
and it was also because we were with the tour group. And uh, so it was sort of, it was, it's really hard to just like be present and take it in and visualize it. Uh, yeah, it was really hard to do that with a group. I said to Paul just today is like, it feels like we haven't done what we need to do there. Like maybe go there in the morning, early morning when hardly anybody's there to really, mm -hmm. you know, soak it in. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's just my, that's just my piece of it. Mm -hmm. And the other places you visited, <clears throat> the Hutta Park, tell the people, what's the Hutta Park? So the Hutter Park is a space um, north. It's north of the Golden Idaho. It's a 20-minute walk because we actually walked up there. At, right next to the river with 12 stones that represent basically the Anabaptist movement and how it was. It's called um, the Ibrige Brocken, and it also represents how the Anabaptist movement sort of started here, but then spread all over, like these pieces went all over. Maybe Astrid, can you quote the saying that, oh, can you quote the verse that is on the plaque? Oh, wie zwölf Steine, nein, wie Steine an seinem Diadem. It's, it's from Sahaya, I think. Yes, und sie werden leuchten, yeah. something about sie yeah. werden leuchten, wie in yeah. seine Krone, yeah. Yeah, right. So that's actually where we started our tour with the with Max. Uh, was at the Hutter Park. That's where we met up with the Bruderhof folks. So it was that was a special time. Like Paul and I showed up there. We were looking at the plaque, and all of a sudden, this big, strong guy from like we we couldn't really tell. That, I mean, he looked sort of American, but he came up and introduced himself. And we've never been around um Bruderhof people so it was a, a pretty special time to meet up at that space and to get to spend the last two days with them um so yeah the Hutter Park is this circle of stones and each of these stones have a, has a word engraved in them from this verse and that was an, each stone represents like there's 12 stones and each one represents a, a martyr as well there's 12 martyrs and they're in a circle to kind of uh, represent community like the Gemeinschaft that the Hutterites live in right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know that the that the Übrige Brocken is also a collection of Hutterite writings. Say this, more. This, it, it, it was a collection of Hutterite writings that actually the um, Corinthian um, Protestants who came to Transylvania, the Hofer, um, they got this collection of the Übrige Brocken um, and the, the Hutterites in Transylvania um, told them with the writing what they believed. So it's also um, a reference to a Hutterite writing, this Übrige Brocken. Yes, thank you for that. So you come across that history again when you come to Transylvania next year. Mm, correct. Then it comes again. Yes. Yeah. yes. yes. So but interesting that you, that you went uh, through Innsbruck with a group of the Bruderhof. How was how was the the connection or what 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 did they feel what did you feel when they when you visited these old places did you talk a bit about their impression of visiting there um i mean a lot of my uh, experience was actually just being able to talk with them and speak with them and speak about um you know our different backgrounds and our how we are similar and how we are different You know, some of them have Hutterite ancestors as well. You know, there's one of them, their mother was a Hofer and another one grew up in the Hutterite community. So there was a nostalgic element in play as well. And for me, that okay. was definitely a highlight, which kind of almost, um, oh, like it kind of, uh, what do you call it? It's like there's four overshadow. But mm. once. It enriched it. Yeah, it enriched it. Uh-huh. You're yeah. special. Uh-huh. So it also being part of a group, seeing it made us more conspicuous. Like there were like one of the women had a head covering, all of the women had dresses on. I could see people looking at us like we were more conspicuous than we would have been if just the two of us had been there, even though yeah, what we might have been wearing our suspenders, which is not a big deal in Innsbruck. Like a lot of people wear suspenders, right? <laughs> um so it was definitely, you could tell, having them along, 
it's like the movement that they come from they're they're they really also cherish this history there's there's some there's something about them taking time out of their schedules and whatever to come and and see this history so it really like paul said really enriched it i would say the of, of just being with people who care about this because if anything if we picked up anything from our guides it was that so many people in Austria just don't know. They don't know, and therefore they can't care about that, this, this history. And, and one example would be, as we were standing underneath this golden Dach, um, you know, there was a table with a covering right in front of it, so you really couldn't get close to it. But Paul got in there, right in there, and, and was taking a picture. And as he was doing that, the people sitting at the table were like, they were sort of interested like what what's going on here like why what's they I, I don't think people even notice that the plaque is there it's so easy to miss so um yeah the 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 bruderhof presence really uh yeah it's i just find experiences like this better like well not, i shouldn't say better but it experiences as as a group can really be deeper than if you're just there as an individual Mm-hmm. And tell me more, you, you, you were today, you were not only in Innsbruck, but also in other places of Tyrol. So which places mm -hmm. did you also visit today? So we visited two towns uh, to the east of here, Schwarz and uh, Rottenberg. And um, they both have a lot of history, like Schwarz in particular. It has, um, well, in, from Schwarz, you can see there's a, a martyr site by the river where You know, some notable figures were executed. I think 20 people ended up being executed there. And you can also see the mountaintop, which was the final meeting place of Jakob Hutto that he had with um, the Anabaptist group here in Gero before he left for Moravia, his final time. And after that, he was also captured. So it's kind of um, a pretty important place. Mm-hmm. That mountain is huge. I couldn't believe it. Like people would go all the way up there. Like that's a huge mountain. People would go all the way up there for, uh, you know, to hear the word of God. Right? That's quite amazing. He's talking about the Stein. Is it Steinerne Joch? Is that? Am I saying that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and then. So, but you didn't. You didn't go up. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Uh, Paul wanted to, but I was like, there's no, 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 not, yeah. not now, not today. <laughs> um, and then there was um, the Schloss on top of the hill where Hans Schlaffer was uh, yeah, imprisoned. He was imprisoned in the Schloss. How do you call that in English? A uh, dungeon? A dungeon castle. Dun castle. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in the bottom of this, in the dungeon, they've kind of renovated it now. And it looks, it looks a lot better, I think, than it did. But we had a pretty intimate moment there where we said some prayers and just, uh, you know, honor the moment and honor the, the events that happened there. And it felt pretty, pretty profound. So the, dun the dungeon itself was, uh, you know, had no stairs going down to it. And of course, um, you know, now they've got stairs where you can actually go down there and see, see what's down there. Um, the moment that he's talking about is Friedel Diem ha was our guide today. And he read uh, Hans's last prayer that he wrote or prayed before he was um, martyred. And it was really, it was a, it was a, a, re a deep, uh, just, yeah, a moment of like, we're right here. This is where it happened. I don't have the word. I'm looking for a word that means like so solemn. It was a solemn moment. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And then Rottenberg, we went to Rottenberg as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we saw the castle ruins where 71 Anabaptists were executed, which is mm -hmm. a pretty big number. So we got to see like there's a castle area. And then when you look up on the hill, you can see the, the ruins themselves. And Paul was pretty adamant he wanted to go up there and I, if it had just been the two of us i think we would have attempted it even though the, the the trail is closed but it didn't feel right you know trying to do it when the group is there and they're waiting for us and uh, all of that but our guide again said yeah it's what terminology did he use he said it's a 
It's a grauslich splutz up yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, it says it's some grauslich energy. Yeah, the energy itself is just, uh, you can feel that not only 71 people were beheaded there, but a lot of other people too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. So I think if, if we were to come back and go through that area, I mean, this is, this is definitely a place that we would want to like, get closer to. Mm-hmm. You, you took the Chronicle long when you, when you visited the places. So did you, did you recognize the places or was it, was it different than the Chronicle said? Or did you have any connection to that, what the Chronicle said about the places? So we actually have a confession to make. We decided not to carry the Chronicles because it's just it's just too heavy. We have it on our phones, like you, it's in this app that you can use. Um, we sent the copy of the Chronicle back with you, Astrid. It's in that bag, <laughs> and you're gonna get the other half in the mail. It's just it just decided this is too much weight. We can't be carrying this. But I'll tell you, yesterday and today. We both had, I think, the moment where it was like, oh, we should have this book with us right now so we can pull it out and read this section. I, I think if I were to redo it, I would want it. Yeah, I guess I think I would want it with us. Are you coming to Innsbruck, Astrid? Uh, no, actually not at the moment. But you have the app. You have the Chronicle on your cell phone. Yeah. Your, so you can, yeah. you can read it there. And you can actually search, keyword search things in there too. So yeah, that would, yeah. yeah. I did look yeah. up, I was actually at Rottenberg today. I pulled it out and I did like, I tried doing a quick search of, you know, what happened at Rottenberg and all of that. So it's possible. Okay. So what's your next day? What's your next steps? You're in Innsbruck now. Mm -hmm. What's, what's the plan? What are your plans for the next week? Next week, we're going to South Tyrol. Tyrol. See Tyrol. So we'll probably go to Brixen. I think it should take around four to five days. It's around 100 kilometers, and uh, we'll spend some time there. There's a lot to see down there as well. And after that, we're probably going to go to Carinthia, go to Spital and then mm -hmm. Across, they say it's sort of up the Pustertal Valley. If I understand this correctly, it's up the Pustertal towards Carinthia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, a person I'm looking forward to seeing in City Roll is Robert Huchgrober, who I met four years ago and who was such a, such a splendid guide to all of these sites. I'll never forget how we got to this house. I think it was where Jacob Hutter was captured and we were standing there and he's got his, his uh, satchel over his shoulder, you know, carrying along whatever he'd have in his satchel. And we get to the house and he opens up this satchel and pulls out the Chronicle and reads to me in German. And I find the German Chronicle really hard to read. It's the, the, the German in it is just like, it's, it's really technical. He pulls it out and he reads to me exactly. This is the place. This is what happened. And he kept doing that throughout the day. So I have, yeah, I want Paul to meet Robert and uh, definitely want to spend some time with him. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, and uh, I'm very excited to see this is our Heimatland, like really, like uh, Südtirol, I guess, or south of Innsbruck here, the the Untertal. Or we, we to... Is it Untertal? The Unterland. Yes, Wipptal und Pustertal. Yeah, and the, the, yeah. that's Unterland, I think. Unterland, that's where, yeah. uh, you know, the Tirolers, we come from the Tirol side, and then also after that, Carinthia, you know, that's genetically and uh, culturally where we come from mm -hmm. and um, you know, that really gets me excited. I think I, I've been feeling the call to that and we're getting, we're knocking on the door right now. We're, we're ready to go in. And we're supposed to have really good weather. The next week is supposed to be really good. Um, yeah. I haven't quite, I, I, if I'm going to be honest, like this first stretch from Zurich to Innsbruck, there's not a lot of Hutterite sites to see. I mean, you see, you have the Taufer Hele and then in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, Jörg Blauruk was a, a prominent figure even, you know, for the Hutterites, and he would have taken a route from Zurich to get to see Tirol, probably through Innsbruck. So I knew that that had, had happened, but it still doesn't feel real to me. And, and I'm hoping that going south from here is when it'll really, like, hit me, like, like point blank in the face. I want this to be, I want to be there, and I want it to feel real, alive. I want to experience it. 
Okay, so take your chronicle along on the on the cell phone, mm-hmm. and uh, and and so we meet again next Friday, and I'll talk and ask you about your impressions in South Tyrol. But before we we part here, uh, one last question to both of you: What what's the most exciting experience or the most exciting insight you had in these two days in Innsbruck, um, Schwarz, and Rattenberg? Could you say that? I think for me it was seeing that giant giant mountain where people walk like it must have taken them all day like it, it would have been exhausted by the time we we're up there and people a lot of people from what I understand went up there to just to to hear Jacopo speak and just seeing the mountain itself and seeing like wow people timed that to hear Jacopo speak was amazing like they could have gone in somewhere in the forest right or in some dungeon and but they climbed up this giant mountain just so they could number one so they could be safe but also the dedication it took and the amount of energy they invested into that it kind of shows you how important it was to them so i would say for my the moment for me was a story or a part of the story that max re- relayed to us yesterday as we were going through innsbruck he said that normally in those days because I, i imagine a lot of the buildings were made out of wood in innsbruck fires were not allowed in the city like this is not something they they they, they must not have been but they wanted to make such an example of jacob hutter that they made an exception to say, we are going to have a fire in the square underneath this golden dahl because people really need to see what, um, you know, the repercussions of the this strange radical belief. Uh, this is what we're, we're going to do with them. And that's something I, I hadn't known before. I would say for me, that was, um, yeah, it's a small historical fact that I had just taken for granted that that you know fires were part of life and uh yeah that made it so much richer for me deeper mm-hmm. okay so thanks jason ah. paul i wish you a good trip to south tyrol and i'm looking forward to all the new experience and insights we're talking about next next week uh see you then Okay, thank you, Astrid. Okay. Yeah, I, we really we yep. just want to say how much we appreciate <laughs> your time and dedication to this project. I just wow. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. If, I'm I'm looking forward to to meeting. I mean, I mean, it, it it will be very interesting to to talk. I think that that might be the the best way, or or it might be very interesting to talk with you about about all the things you realize or you have you 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 experience or also also the 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 feelings you have when you're at, at these places yeah yes so good it the debriefing like this session is going to be helpful even for us so yeah thank you thank you Yo. Have, have a good week yourself too yeah you too see you okay. bye now <laughs> Cheers. ciao